Hi guys, another video on the historical returns and especially now on the uh, permanent portfolio here. Uh, I did some um, editing thanks to some feedback of some commenters uh, on my previous video. And uh, yeah, it's true that um, it doesn't make much sense to do 50-50 global stocks gold uh, because uh, well, uh, because just the results were not so good, it was way too volatile and um, not uh, such high returns uh, compared to doing 75% uh, global stocks and only 25% physical gold is a better uh, combination. Also, um, I changed uh, the here uh, average, uh, the, the returns of the last 10 years after inflation uh, in the previous video and the previous sheet I would take uh, these uh, inflation uh, numbers, but uh, actually, um, of course, that's not realistic, as I mentioned also in a previous video, because price increases, for example, the last 10 years is not 16% per year here. Um, but if you take, um, and I was also mentioning in the last video, but of course, on the other hand, like uh, price increases uh, are also in the 60s here, not 0% uh, per year or minus two percent per year that's also not the case eh? so the amount of money printed uh, does not reflect immediately in the economy it takes sometimes decades uh, before these uh, it's also to 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 price prices. Uh, so, so a much better idea is to take the average of the whole period which you see at the bottom of the page here um, um, uh, for example, from 1928 till 2017, the average amount of money printed by the Fed is 6% per year. Um, actually, it's 8%, but 2% is deducted per year uh, because that's the economic growth. Also, um, uh, I removed uh, certain things such as, um, actually, I was taking into account the amount of gold uh, that the Federal Reserve had and was deducting that, but I don't think that's justified. Uh, and um, uh, because when, when when the Federal Reserve issues more money and buys assets with that, it doesn't matter what it buys. It, it whether it's gold or bonds or uh, real estate or um, buildings, it doesn't matter uh, because the amount of money goes up. Uh, and it is pushed into the economy. Um, so, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, but of course, if there's economic growth, then, as I exp explained in the previous video, then you can deduct that. Eh? Um, and, and so, there is about two percent uh, per year economic growth in the US um, over this period. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Eh? Uh, on average. And so uh, that's deducted. And so uh, on average, the Fed has printed uh, not 6%, uh, but 8%, but 2% uh, per year is deducted. So you have about 6% inflation uh, uh, price rises um, uh, per year. And that's correct. Uh, if you just take a, and you can see that in the other video, I will link again below here, a great video I made where I take a lot of services, products, assets, and I look at the price rises, and indeed, uh, on average, it's 5% per year. Here I have, uh, on average, if you look at the amount of money uh, printed, 6% per year. Well, that's very close, 5% eh? or 6% up for discussion, but certainly not 2% as, uh, as the government uh, claims. And that's certainly not the amount of uh, uh, that prices go up, certainly not. So I think the 6% is very uh, presentable, but um, the amount of money printed, it is different. Like uh, before 71, so from 1928 to 1971, it's actually 5% per year. And then after 1971, uh, when the US dollar was uh, again decoupled more from the gold, um, it, was, it became like 7% per year. So 2% per year more uh, the Fed has been printing since 1971. So I just put these numbers here uh, uh, until 1971. Uh, you have a 5% per year inflation, price rises, uh, based on the amount of money printed, and that's correct. Uh, also shows if you just study prices, uh, and since 1971, on average, 7% per year uh, price rises, uh, which um, I think um, 
Mm, it's up for discussion. Uh, you could say it's not 7%, uh, it's only 6%, it's only 5%, okay? Uh, but um, yeah, uh, it's a subjective discussion, as I mentioned. Um, like if you take everything into account, uh, not just uh, commodities, which is the one asset that actually uh, goes up the least uh, in prices eh, because commodities are commoditized products. Uh, 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 thanks to mass production, it becomes cheaper and cheaper to produce that. Uh, if you make take a basket of, of commodities, of course, price rises are less uh, than 7% on average. But you also have to include assets uh, such as real estate in uh, major uh, economic hubs such as New York and LA. Well, uh, that's much more than 7% per year on average. Uh, you're probably at 10% per year on average. So, uh, or 9%. Uh, and as you can see with stocks here, uh, just look down here, eh? uh, stocks go up with 9.5% per year uh since 71 9.5 percent per year well you know uh, uh that's that also says a lot about inflation actually uh but anyway uh, i just uh want to go uh, here to uh this uh this chart here very interesting so you see that after inflation if you deduct seven percent per year here huh, every year uh then you can see that the average returns of stocks for example uh, for the last 10 years has been minus 3%. Um, that's not good. Um, and for uh, gold, the average returns have been minus 2% the last 10 years. That's also not good. Um, and so uh, if you take uh, uh, the mixture of these two, 75%, uh, 25%, you have minus 1% per year. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what you will see here in the chart. Um, we, if we start at the beginning here, after inflation, after deducting this 5%, you have uh, for stocks uh, here uh, minus 5% returns in the 30s, last 10 years, and for gold, 1% per year. And then uh, if you take a mixture of these, you have minus 4% per year. So this is what you can see here. Uh, it's starting here. But so what's very interesting to see is that, as you can see, uh, blue is stocks gold is uh, yellow here uh, after inflation that in the 50s 60s you have an, a return a real return uh, for stocks of 10 percent per year here eh? peaking out at 15 percent per year that's very good but in the meantime in a in in the 40s 50s and 60s eh? um uh, 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 gold is very very badly and after inflation uh it loses you about eight percent per year uh, uh, so that's very bad. But you take an average of, the, or you take this portfolio with 75% stocks and 25% gold, and you have respectable returns here of after inflation about 5 6% per year, which is very good. Very good. Eh? It's a passive portfolio here. Uh, every year it's rebalanced, and you don't have to use your uh, mind to think, oh, what's going to do well here? You don't make these uh, capital mistakes to bet on the wrong asset, uh, you never do that eh? because you always have the same mixture. And, and the question here is, are these good returns for a passive portfolio? And, uh, and I challenge you to, uh, to uh, look at any other uh, because you have a whole community around passive portfolios. Uh, but I think that uh, it will be very hard for you to find a passive portfolio that has these returns here. Eh? Um, uh, these are the returns versus US dollars every year. Uh, and, uh, and if you take an average of the last 10 years, you get these returns. And that's the green line here. Huh? Uh, I think these returns are very, very, very good. Uh, and, and if you look at after inflation, after real inflation, huh? which you are estimating on the high end, that's certainly the case. But then still, you are keeping the purchasing power of your capital. Uh, and you don't have to do much for it. So that's very good. And you even have a, 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 a return here, eh? because here is the total return. Eh? After real inflation, over this period, you have 2% per year. And since 71, you have 4% per year. A real return that you can blow, eh? that you can spend. Eh? 
uh, and this is uh, for many people uh, 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 what they want to achieve in life uh, uh, a secure pension a security uh, to grow old and not having to put uh, energy into how to invest your money but still being able to live from your capital well here is the solution uh, 4% that you can spend per year without losing your uh, your uh, source capital is incredible uh, with for a passive portfolio so so i think this is really worthwhile uh, for if you want to do that personally i'm not interested to do this i'm i'm an active investor uh, a long term investor and i like to allocate my capital in much better risk reward ratio investments such as cryptocurrency um, but i just share this uh, for you guys because um yeah, I think it can be inspiring and maybe one day I will use it too. Um, but right now I'm just waiting for the bear market to complete in crypto and buy coins like Bitcoin Cash. I think that's enormous opportunity uh, and will yield, of course, much higher returns, but also much higher risk, of course. Um, so um, I think this is beautiful. You see the blue uh, line here. Um, of stocks. So in the 70s here, 80s, you see that it becomes negative. Stocks after deducting real inflation have negative returns, but uh, it's not much. Eh? So you could make the case here that actually 100% stocks makes uh, sense uh, because you do have sometimes uh, periods like here, for example, this is really bad. Eh? Uh, in 2000, just after the financial crisis in 2008-9, the average return of stocks is uh, for the last 10 years after inflation, minus 8% per year. So you do can, with stocks, lose a lot of money in 10 years' time if you count for real inflation. Uh, you see that number here in stocks here, minus 6% per year the last 10 years in 2009. Huh? So that's very bad. If you want to avoid that, you just put 25% gold in the portfolio. And at that point, gold was just uh, killing it. Huh? And, and due to that, um, uh, instead of minus 6%, you have 7% real returns after inflation here in the same year. And if you would have to take this mixture of 75, 25, well, you don't lose minus 6%, you only lose minus 1% after real inflation. So you don't lose anything. Um, and that's the point of a passive portfolio because the idea of a passive portfolio is that you have to be able to deduct every year money for living expenses. And so you can't just wait 10 years uh, and not deduct anything because you have a bad decade. Uh, and that's certainly happening if you only invest in stocks, you do have sometimes a bad decade. We have, the, we have actually three bad decades for stocks here since 1928. Okay? This is the start here with the, in the 30s, you had the Great Depression. So the average returns for uh, stocks were extremely bad. You see that in the beginning here. Here also again, after inflation, minus 6% per year in 1938. So the last 10 years, you lost 6% per year. So your real purchasing power of your capital, if you only invest in stocks, is down, I don't know, uh, at least 50%, probably like 60, 70%. So that's a disaster. Eh? So even eh, like that's so interesting with this very long term uh, uh, simulation. It's not even a simulation, it's real numbers. Uh, I also challenge you to find that anywhere else. I think this is a, a very beautiful a chart because it goes back so, so long. But over this whole period, you see, you see that. Um, that, that this, this portfolio works huh? uh, even during the Great Depression. Uh, with just 25% gold, uh, you have very respectable returns. Uh, actually, uh, as you can see, uh, you do, list, do lose here minus 4% per year, minus 5% per year. How is that possible? I have to study this because that's weird. Huh? Maybe I made a calculation mistake here. Let me check. Uh, no, uh, this is correct, uh, but uh, but but the explanation here is that in the third you actually had real deflation in consumer prices. Eh? Um, so 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 I, I, I'm I, here like 
it's a little bit uh, wrong. Uh, it is average inflation of 5% is correct for the period from 1928 till 1971. But within that period, actually, it is different. Eh? Uh, you have probably also uh, read or heard about the Great Depression in the 30s. Uh, real consumer prices went down. Eh? So this 5% inflation is actually not correct. Uh, it's it's lower. It's actually zero or even negative for this decade. But then uh, after it will be higher at a 5%. Uh, so, 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 so if I would have done this correctly here, you would also see that this uh, kind of portfolio actually after inflation does not return minus 4%. Eh? You can see here the actual returns in US dollars for this portfolio over the last 10 years is 2%. And uh, you know that in that period, actually, on average, prices went down. This is the last decade that this ever happened, eh? uh, because um, this, this, for example, did not happen in the new Great Depression that we all experienced in 2008, uh, even though it was very bad. Uh, for example, um, trade collapsed with 80 to 90 percent between the East and the West. Eh? This was only seen before here in the 30s, also happened in 2008. So it was really a similar scenario where also all big banks uh, went broke and, and, and got bailed out. Also the same here, uh, but uh, but big difference between these two periods is that you had actual real deflation there. Prices actually really went down, uh, also from, from consumer codes, uh, but that certainly did not happen during the 2008 economic crisis. Uh, consumer goods continued to go up even that year uh, and all the years after. So, so um, voila, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, what else do I want to say? A couple of points. Uh, the the stocks global is indeed uh, the MSCI uh, GDP World Index, but uh, someone else uh, pointed out that this is only from developed countries, 20 developed countries or so. You also have a, 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 an index these days that also includes about 20 to 25 emerging countries. And uh, that's, of course, um, better. Uh, and uh, I will uh, change it also in this index if I find the time. Uh, but of course, this does not go back very uh, far, probably only 10 years. That's why I didn't include this yet. But if you would build out this portfolio, I would recommend to take the other index uh, that also includes um, emerging markets. The wider the index, the better. But of course, it's a good idea to have it GDP weighted. Um, and then also something else is bonds and cash. Just want to say, say something more about this. I call this still the PP world, the permanent portfolio. Uh, but uh, Harry Brown recommended uh, actually to also include uh, not 75% uh, uh, stocks, which is actually a pretty traditional way to uh, compose his portfolio. He had a pretty controversial way to compose it, uh, which is um, um, uh, to have only 25% stocks, but also include long-term bonds for 25% and also include 25% cash. That's very weird. Uh, you normally never see that in these passive portfolios. And also 25% gold, and that's also weird. And so usually these passive portfolios will look like almost everything stocks. Actually, 75% stocks and then 25% uh, bonds. And the bonds is not long-term bonds, but like short-term bonds. Uh, so usually it's like that. Uh, but but uh, I think you will easily see if you take like, basically they switch the gold portion that you have here for bonds. Uh, and you will see that this is just a bad idea. Uh, like in the 70s, for example, uh, the bonds will, would not have safeties and very bad returns here. Uh, only gold could. Uh, and the same here in, in 2000, uh, from 2000 till 2009. Uh, incredibly bad returns for uh, stocks and, and bonds would not have saved you. Long-term bonds, yes. Uh, uh, of uh, this time, long-term bonds from the government would have saved you, 30-year uh, long-term bonds, but uh, that would not have been the case in the 70s where they got obliterated. Uh, and so, whereas gold did it in both scenarios. Huh? Uh, and so, yeah, uh, 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 that's important. Um, so, so, and it's, it's important to keep things simple. Um, if you can achieve uh, a portfolio that has higher returns and that is equally stable or maybe a little bit less stable but much higher returns, uh, sorry, less volatile, with stability I mean volatility, yeah? 
uh, then that's a better uh, solution. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the problem with the permanent portfolio is that uh, due to this uh, 25% cash portion, uh, the, the average returns are not good enough. Um, they are not good enough. Uh, if you count for real inflation here, you're losing money. Uh, and that is not acceptable. Uh, so, so I think, um, yeah, uh, it, 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 the design of the portfolio was not so good uh, as the design of this portfolio. Um, simplicity, simplicity counts also. It's just so much work to, to, to buy all these assets and store all these assets without counterparty risk. I've done it and, uh, and it's just too much work. It's, it's too complex. You have to keep things simple and, and, uh, and that also is uh, worth a lot. And uh, you can do this with this kind of portfolio because uh, you only need to buy one index uh, of stocks that, of course, has counterparty risk uh, because you're going to own this via some kind of broker. Um, uh, and then you have a small portion of physical gold uh, that you can store yourself and that has no counterparty risk and that uh, uh, usually doesn't perform very well, but then sometimes per every 20, 30 years, it, it performs very good for 10 years, exactly when stocks do poorly after counting for real inflation. So I think it's a, a great portfolio and I hope I hope it inspires uh, some of you. Um, this, this is a much better solution, for example, than, than a bank account. Uh, or 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 um, or or a savings account. Uh, like uh, if you look over a period of, uh, well, of course, from year to year, that's not the case. Eh? From year to year, sometimes eh, this portfolio will have big losses. Eh? Here, especially here eh, in 2008, minus 30 eh, percent in in 2000, also minus 10 percent per year, three years in a row. So sometimes this portfolio has a, a very bad year. So if it's only for one to two years, yes, then I don't think it's worthwhile to to, to start such a portfolio. Uh, but if it's for longer, if it's for five years, uh, I don't have them here, average last 10 years, but I can show them because I do, have, oh no, I removed it. But uh, if you look at the 10 year, uh, your returns are much higher than a savings account. And on a five year basis, the same. It's just a little bit more volatile. And so, so basically, like for one, two years, okay, if you're going to need that money, uh, it's not worth taking the risk to it because like, there's a one in four chance that you're going to have a negative year here uh, and lose five to 10%. That's not why you, what you want to, like, that's not worth the risk, I would say. But if it's like for four or five years, yes, uh, it's like 90% it's like sure or 95% sure that your average, average returns will be about Five, uh, no, a year nine, nine percent, uh, ten percent per year. Uh, that's a very good and uh, much better than zero percent. Uh, 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 and and like it, it just hasn't happened here uh, that uh, that you have low returns ex ex only in the thirties, but uh, but then yeah, through inflation. So yeah, if it's for more than two years, I would say this is really a good uh, solution. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video and. Um, and uh, yeah, you will find in the description also the links to the sheet and um, the sheet is open source. So just uh, post your email and I add you to the sheet and you can also see the data behind it uh, and uh, you can improve it or just make a copy and work on that. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.